Hi and welcome to a quick presentation where I hope to give you a quick insight into my independent project. This project was supervised by Professor Thomas Polkar and was titled An Evaluation of Adhesive Contact Models for Elastic Solids Using Atomic Force Microscopy. With this project we hope to apply a handful of models already proposed for adhesive contacts and then, using data collected using AFM experimentation and previous research conducted by the scientific community, we wish to evaluate the applicability of these models to some of the materials at the forefront of tribological research. You may ask, why do we care? Well, the Engineering Materials and Service Technology Group at the University of Southampton have been exploring the application and uses of a relatively new subset of materials known as 2D materials due to their excellent tribological performance. The focus of this project was a transition metal dichalcogenide known as molybdenum disulfide, also known as MOS2. MOS2, when applied in thin layers onto a substrate, is incredibly stable and can be used in a wide range of harsh environments ranging from the vacuum of space to the high temperatures often found within machinery. At small scales, TMDs often present non-linearities with load due to the complex interactions that occur. These interactions can be both beneficial and disadvantageous as they govern the macro performance of the materials. Through the use of AFM and lateral force microscopy, these materials can be examined in a scientific manner in order to identify their behaviour. This can highlight load, area and or pressure dependencies and help us to formulate an appropriate model in order to predict and understand their performance. As 2D materials become more common, this level of understanding is vital in gaining the trust of users and engineers. The first of the three models considered was the Hertz model. First arrived in 1882 in order to calculate the deformation of curved glass lenses, the Hertz model only seeks to satisfy the boundary conditions of the mechanical problem and does not consider adhesion between the two bodies. It is valid for elastic solids across a large range of scales and levels of stiffness. In the 1930s, the scientific community began to take note of the presence of adhesion between solid bodies and not just within liquids. Dirk Owen formed his 1934 approximation concerning an approximation as to the level of adhesion between two bodies. This approximation was formed in two ways, firstly through the considerations of a field over which an interaction potentially existed, and secondly as the energy to separate two surfaces in contact. Following on from experimentation conducted by his co-workers, Johnson, the J and JKR, formulated a theory of adhesion akin to that proposed in the early 20th century for fracture mechanics. They considered the force required to separate two surfaces already in contact using the assumption that the only form of adhesion between the two bodies occurred within the contact area. This model required the bodies to be large and soft in order for the length of deformation to dwarf the range over which the adhesive interactions decayed. The DMT model was formed as an extension to the earlier interactual potential approximation made by de Gowen. Conversely to the JKR model, it required the bodies being considered to be small and rigid. Adhesion was only considered outside of the contact area, and this was valid for as long as the contact areas and thus deformations remained small. Because of this, the level of adhesion throughout loading remained constant. Multiple tip sample pairs were used to explore the adhesion and force dependent friction using AFM and LFM machinery. Molybdenum disulfide was used as a sample as well as silicon dioxide in order to be able to explore the interesting phenomena of 2T materials and to have a well studied counterpart to compare to. Varying size tips were used throughout the data collection process in order to monitor the effects of contact size and possibly identify transition between the DMT and JKR models. The data recorded was processed and the models discussed earlier were applied to them. The Hertz model was only considered within the positive loading regime and related values of friction. From this, the pressure area relationship with load was derived from each model. This relationship was then translated to the friction using the separately recorded load friction relationship for each model. From a closer analysis of the load and load data, a jump can be seen as the tip comes into the range of the adhesive forces and comes into contact with the sample. As it was not explicitly measured, this jump was used as an estimation as to the minimum length over which the interactive forces decay. From the assumptions made within the models and this estimated interaction decay length, it can be deduced that the tip sample pairs considered within this project were more suitable to be analysed under the DMT model. These exact relationships were derived and presented within the report. Consolidation of additional research and peer-reviewed experimentation further supported this conclusion. Limitations of the DMT model present the contact area as a singularity as it decreases to a point contact. This occurs as the external load approaches a critical pull-off force. This is due to the DMT model being derived using the assumption that the contact stresses dwarf the adhesive stresses present across the body. From the DMT models provided friction area and pressure relationships as well as considerations of previously published research, some assumptions were made as to the driving forces behind the friction force and whether or not the simplified models could be used to model friction appropriately in 2D materials. 
experimental results and conclusions were supported by previous research. Some of these included the dependence of MOS2 on both pressure and area due to its potential energy surface and due to chemical bonds forming under higher loading and thus becoming the dominating friction force. Silicon carbide is known to sustain microfractures. The debris from which can form a tribal layer and reduce friction. The performance of this tribal layer can be influenced greatly by humidity and atmospheric conditions. Silicon dioxide showed the most simple linear relationship with load, decaying slightly as load increased. This was predicted as computational models suggest that the elastic deformation is a large contributor to friction. Due to the simple nature of the models considered within this paper, they may present as a substitution to more complex finite element simulations in larger macroscale computations in order to speed up computational models at a small cost to accuracy. The experimentation conducted for this project should possibly be repeated with a wider range of tip sample pairs in order to validate the assumptions made by only having pairs vary by given variables such as material or tip size. In addition, imagery of the tips and samples should be taken in order to evaluate the presence and effects of tribal layers, as well as a safeguard in order to identify any malocurrences during experimentation that could otherwise influence the results. 